Welcome back, everybody, to Volatility Trading Strategies. So if I were forced to categorize my work here at VTS into the most condensed description possible, I might be tempted to use the words volatility targeting. Now, of course, we do extensive options trading as well, so we can't put it all into a neat category, but at least a couple of our strategies are what I would call volatility targeting. Essentially, what that means is we are data mining as many historical periods as we can, and then we're trying to figure out what levels of volatility correspond to the best performance for all the various assets at classes. So for example, when is the best time to hold stocks? Is it during low volatility when everything is calm? What about gold? When does that perform best? Maybe during higher volatility. Today, I'm going to give you an example of volatility targeting, and we are essentially going to answer a question. What levels on the VIX index correspond to the best performance to short the VXX? Now, if you watch my videos, you probably know what both of those are, but really quickly here, VXX was the first volatility ETP on the market, launched on January 29th, 2009. And clearly, the long term trend is down, right? The problem is it's a very dangerous product to short because it can spike up violently and there's a graveyard of blown up trading accounts who try to do that. However, there are ways to short it a little more responsibly. The other component is the VIX index. Now, I have other videos going into much more detail about the VIX that you can check out, but essentially it's a statistic based on S&P 500 options activity to give the market's estimation of forward plus or minus movement on the S&P 500. It's essentially the world's most popular and most referenced volatility metric. Now, it's not a particularly good one. In follow-up videos, I will introduce much more robust volatility metrics. But the question we are answering today, based on the different VIX index levels, when is the best time to hold short volatility positions? What I've done is I've divided the VIX index up into quintiles. So a quintile, as the word suggests, is five equal portions. So we're talking about 0 to 20, 20 to 40, etc. Lowest VIX ever was 914, highest was 8269. So you're talking about the range between these two being the lowest 20, here's the 20 to 40, etc. So when you're looking at this, when do you think is the best time to short the VXX? Because I could make a case here for several of these different ranges. On the one hand, and this low range, you could make a case that that might actually be the best time to short volatility, right? To short that VXX. Because when volatility gets really low, that probably means the stock market's doing well at that period. Wouldn't that be a great time to short volatility? You're just riding that stock market doing extremely well. On the flip side, what about that 80 to 100 range? Some people might think that's the time to attack. And I certainly get a lot of questions on that. You know, when the VIX gets to 25, I get bombarded with emails. Isn't now the time to short volatility, right? And you can kind of make a case. If you short it when it gets high, aren't you going to be able to ride it down? So what about the middle range? Maybe the 40 to 60. Maybe that's the sweet spot. This is your answer. Pretty messy to look at. We're going to go through each one of them individually, but you can see there is one clear winner. I don't know who in the chat section, if you guessed right, the 60 to 80th percentile, well, good for you. But we are going to go through all five of these sections, and I'm going to kind of explain why this might be. So the first section, this is an interesting one. This one often confuses people, but this is the lowest volatility on the VIX, 0 to 20th percentile from the lowest ever 914 up until 1286. And you can see, aside from early on, the first three years, it's basically flat, almost negative. In the last 17 years, it's negative. Now, why would this be happening? If you think about it, when would the VIX be low? Well, that's when the stock market's doing well, like I said. But it could also be a time when the stock market might be running on fumes, right? Doesn't necessarily mean that there's going to be an imminent VIX spike. A lot of people make that mistake. They think, oh, the VIX is at 11. Load up on VIX calls. It's going to spike any second. No, it doesn't mean that. Volatility can stay low for a very long period of time. But the point is, when it gets to those low levels, it takes an awful lot to keep that market going. So that's actually a range where not a whole lot is happening. This 0 to 20% range, basically flat. If you were to just remove it from your strategy and just not short vol when it gets this low, that would be backed up by historical data. So the second range, 20 to 40, this is a good range, right? And no surprise, I don't think we have to talk too much on this one. What's happening there? Of course, the market is capitalizing on longer term trends when this happens. Now you can see there are some flat periods. Of course, that's because this is the financial crisis. It's very difficult for the VIX to get below 15 after a major spike. So you can go years without seeing any of these values surface. Same thing recently in 
after the COVID crash, we did dip below 15 very temporarily, but again, certainly running on fumes at that point. So you're going to see a lot of flat lines, but this is a good section of the market. This one is interesting. Now, this one takes a little bit more explanation. So you would think, or at least most of us, I think, who trade vol a lot would think that this is the sweet spot range. And for any stable market periods, you'd be right that 40 to 60 is the best spot when the markets are cooperating. But therein lies the rub because it's also a range where you do see values during recessions and down periods. Whereas this range, very difficult to see them. So you're not really seeing a whole lot of negative action here. Same thing here. VIX is never going to get to 1286 after or during a recession. But this is the range where if things are not going well in the market, it's going to show up a lot in this center range. There's going to be a lot of whipsaw, a lot of choppiness. And you can see that, that it performed very well early up. Financial crisis, it slipped. Exceptional performance all the way to 2018. And in the last five years, it's been rough, right? The short VXX is actually substantial substantially down in that five year period. And it's going to show up here a lot. It's hanging around in that middle range of volatility. And that is obviously hurting the results here. So the volatility trade is not dead. It will come back to a point where it starts doing really well again. That's what happens in good stable bull markets. But we are basically dancing on the knife edge of a recession for quite a while now. So that's a little bit unfortunate. Here's the best range. This is the 60 to 80 and not very surprising here. What's happening here, and especially if you were to divide it further, like 60 to 70 is, is better. 60 to 65 even is really good. It's just that cusp between upper one third and lower two thirds vol. That's a real sweet spot for the short vol trade. So not a lot to say here. This is the top performer. If we go to the last one, this is what I was talking about, low hanging fruit. Clearly, this is not good. This is where that 92% drawdown happened. This is when the VIX gets to 24 or above. So a lot of people think, and this is maybe a good side lesson here, a lot of people think that when the VIX gets to those high levels, that's when you should short vol. And I know intuitively what people are thinking when they do that, but historical data does not back up that statement. The worst time to short vol is during high volatility. Contrarians always think the opposite. They think they're going to be the first one in there and they're going to make all that money when it crashes. Sometimes they do. If you look at this chart, there were exceptional periods of performance, but there's just as many times it goes against you and you just ride this excruciating drawdown 90% or more. Being a contrarian in the volatility space doesn't actually work. I only go long volatility about two to three percent of trading days. And when I go long vol, it is during these very high volatility ranges. People think that's counterintuitive, but that's actually how you make the most money. Go long Long volatility when there is a clear and present reason why the market is melting down and then have a very healthy cash position and then of course short vol during mid to low. I think people would have the best results doing that. Okay, putting all of this together, what would I say? Basically in general, like I said, eliminate low hanging fruit. So just today, this is again entry level, we're going to go way further in the future, but today it's pretty clear you should eliminate the 80 to 100, right? This is not worth holding. There's nothing there that is, is really attractive long term. And you can certainly make a case to just eliminate this because there's no performance coming from that either. So if you're just going to hold vol 60% of the time, where would you hold it? Well, you would probably hold it in the 20 to 80th percentile. So if you want to see what that looks like, here's the final results. This is holding vol 60% of the time when the VIX index is 1286 to 2415. Now, this isn't great. This isn't anything to write home about. But if somebody has the buy and hold on the S&P 500, they're only making a 7% return. This is a 20 20 year period. So this is actually cherry picked a little bit. If you stretched it out another five years, it would actually go down to about 5% a year. That's all the stock market has made in our investing lifetime. But you have to sustain a 57% drawdown to get that money, which to me, this is why it always bothers me that all these asset managers, financial planners, financial advisors, they're always so eager to tell people just buy and hold the S&P, just hold an ETF. It spreads out the risk. You can hold the entire stock market, all the companies. It's fantastic. Well, what they always fail to mention is that, you know, little problem of the six plus year 57% drawdown that you would have had to sustain. Because if you pull the plug, then you don't get all that recovery afterwards and your five to 7% annualized return turns into zero very, very quickly. So again, people often overestimate their risk tolerance. Buy and hold S&P 500, in my mind, is a non-starter. Why would you invest in something that has a drawdown that much higher than your rate of return? This is insane. At least 
with this short VXX strategy, completely rudimentary. This is just basic step one of a 15 step process. It's already way higher return and the drawdown we're chipping away at it a little bit. Now, again, I will highlight that there are better ways to do this. We have our tactical volatility strategy. This launched in 2012 with the VTS portfolio. There are ways to really zone in onto the metrics that are truly giving you the most robust results and you can get your rate of return fairly close to your drawdown level. It's the same thing that we do with our overall portfolio with VTS. You know, 22.5% return across our entire strategies. Largest drawdown was about 25%, largely contributed by the first four months of 2022. That was not fun at all. But other than that, biggest drawdown was 11% and then 10%. So managing drawdowns is actually how I boost my performance. A lot of people out there, for some reason, when they say, oh, I want to get a better rate of return. Well, what do they do? They chase, right? They add leverage. They try to find those big wins, that big gains. Post it on Twitter. You'll be a rock star. The way that I maximize my performance and my rate of return is by reducing the drawdowns. If you can get your drawdown portfolio wide to below 30%, well, now you're on to something because the S&P is at 57%. That's a non-starter. And you're only going to get five to 7% by doing that. If you can get your drawdown anywhere close to your rate of return, that's an excellent risk reward ratio. So short vol strategies, obviously there is potential to make more than an average rate of return. If we can just whittle away on those risk management spots and those low hanging fruit areas where we're really, there's no reason to be holding it in that spot. Maybe you can get yourself a 20% annual return with a 20%, 25% drawdown. That's the goal. Kind of want to keep those numbers as close as possible. Long term, that's going to pay off a lot. So that's how I would basically start if I was you. Now, I've been doing this for 17 years now, so I will share more and more as I go, but that is a very good start to get you guys going. And that's how you build a strategy. Start with buy and hold. It sucks. It's terrible. Nobody can do it. And then just start chipping away and adding things that can eliminate the worst spots. I would always attack the risk management rather than try to amplify the return. I think that long term, you'll find your results are a lot better if you manage risk first and then try to get a good return after that. Kind of backwards. For some reason in this world, everybody chases. So for an extensive volatility metrics dashboard updated daily, and to see all of the live trades for our tactical rotation and option strategies, click this link right here and claim your free trial to the VTS community. You're always welcome to join us anytime. See you next time.